go. Yeah, wir warten noch mal eine Minute. I'm going to wait for a minute. So dass sich alle hier versammeln können. Okay, my check, Mohammed, you can also hear me. Yeah? Okay, good. Yes. Good. Einen wunderschönen guten Tag, liebe Cyberabwehrathleten da draußen. Und schön, dass ihr alle jetzt heute auch hier zu unserer zweiten Session jetzt äh, dazugekommen seid. Heute, ihr wisst es, in der ersten Session haben wir darüber geredet, ähm, generell, wie es aus Coden aussieht, was man machen kann. Heute geht es ein bisschen in die Details, ins Detail rein und zwar, wie man, ähm, ja, wie eine Trial aussehen kann, was man machen kann. Ich bin wie immer euer Adrian oder Adi von Trend Micro aus, dem, aus der Cloud Business Acceleration Unit und klar, bevor es gleich losgeht heute, ein bisschen Housekeeping auch, wenn ihr Fragen habt, Gerne auf unseren Chat klicken oder auf Q&A, dort einfach die Frage direkt rein. Ihr könnt sie in Deutsch stellen oder in Englisch, das ist kein Problem. Ich werde dann auch immer helfen, das zu übersetzen und gucken, dass es so interaktiv wie möglich hier sein kann. Auch nach diesem Workshop wird es so sein, dass wir euch ein On-Demand-Recording zur Verfügung stellen können, sowie auch Slides, falls benötigt. Und für alle weiteren Fragen im Nachgang, im Vorgang oder auch währenddessen, wenn ihr euch dazu bewogen fühlt, eine E-Mail zu schreiben, seht ihr auch hier, ich zeige es am Ende aber auch nochmal, azure underscore bizcenter at trendmicro.com. Dort habt ihr die Möglichkeit, einfach auch weitere Fragen oder Anfragen zu stellen. Genau. Ähm, ich bin natürlich heute nicht alleine. Ich helfe hier bei der Moderation mit dabei. Ich werde es gleich auch übergeben an meinen wundervollen Kollegen, der Mohammed el -Atubi. Ich sage mal ganz kurz auch Hallo zur Introduction. Hello, Mohammed. You can say a quick hello to the audience. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Good afternoon from Morocco. Happy to be here. Very nice. Genau. Und bevor der Mohammed dann gleich loslegt, auch nochmal wichtig, ihr bekommt am Ende von diesem Workshop auch nochmal einen Survey und wenn ihr den ausfüllt, gibt es dafür als Belohnung auch nochmal Trend Micro Maximum Security, also für euren privaten Gebrauch. Bis zu äh, drei Geräte könnt ihr damit schützen, für euren Privatbedarf. Da kommen wir aber gleich nochmal dazu und jetzt geht es tatsächlich hier in die Nitty Gritty Details. Ich lasse diese Slide hier jetzt noch mal ganz kurz für euch äh, offen, damit ihr sehen könnt, was dort los ist. Also wenn ihr euren Trend Micro Cloud One Trial Account nutzen wollt, seht ihr hier die URL, den Link. Und wenn ihr euch ins Azure Portal einloggen möchtet, seht ihr auch hier noch mal die URL dafür. Wichtig ist, alles, was wir heute machen, ist valid für 24 Stunden. Könnt ihr damit arbeiten und genau, das vielleicht sei noch mal an dieser Stelle gesagt. Mit dem würde ich jetzt ins Englisch wechseln. Wenn es etwas zu schnell ist oder wenn etwas nicht verstanden worden ist, haut uns einfach hier an im Chat oder im Q&A. Mohammed und ich sind äh, jederzeit immer offen, da zu pausieren und das zu beantworten. With that, I transition to English, Mohammed. I did the introductions. I showed them what we are mm -hmm. going to do and where they can find the links for today. And I think, uh, yeah, you can quickly introduce yourself and then we can get this uh, workshop and this session going. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Adrian. So uh, hello, everyone. Happy uh, to be here today with you. And thank you for your uh, attendance. My name is Mohamed El Ajoubi. Uh, I'm a, actually technical solutions architect with Trend Micro, and I've been with Trend Micro for uh, more than two years now. And for this session, I'll be leading uh, the workload security uh, cloud one uh, solution so that uh, we will have two labs, one that will cover the uh, anti-malware capabilities and the second uh, part of the lab will cover the host-based uh, intrusion prevention system. All right. Okay. I think we can we can start with that. You want to take over or what do you think is the best way to proceed from here? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can take over, share my screen and start mm -hmm. right away. Okay. The, if you can stop sharing so I can have the... Ah, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. 
Okay. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen by now. I can see it, definitely. Thank you. OK. OK. Now, uh, for the uh, prerequisites, actually, that we would need to actually start the lab is if you have the already received the link for the step-by-step -step guide, which is this one on the uh, web page, you can actually start by registering on Cloud One portal for a 30 days free trial. So uh, you have already might have already received the registration link for Cloud One. So all you have to do is click the trial button and you should be prompted to this uh, web page to enter uh, information, contact information. After that, you will receive a, a message for verification of your email address. And after you do the verification, you'll receive the uh, 30 days trial and you can automatically sign in uh, into the uh, Cloud One portal. So by the end of your registration you should and the login, you should be able to see a page uh, like this. So let's let us know if you need time maybe to register right now, or if you've already have uh, registered, you can please confirm in the Zoom chat. Is the chat working? We have no response in the chat yet, but. Uh... OK, so I'll be signing into the Cloud One Trend Micro Portal with my credentials. I'll click sign in. Yeah, we have one feedback here from um, two people. There's uh, there's Thomas and there's Oliver. They they already re registered yesterday, so they should be ready and set up. So that's good. Thank you for the feedback, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So once you uh, log in, you should be actually uh, you should be able to see a page like this, and we will be able to see all of the. Uh, solutions or components of cloud one but for today's session we will choose endpoint and workload security so we'll leave that for now and go back to the step-by-step -step guide now the first part which is the prerequisite is completed on the left hand side of the step by step guide, you can see the second part of the lab, which will enable us to connect our Azure resources from the Cloud One console, establish a connection between the two. For that, we will need to perform an app registration with the right permissions to allow uh, Cloud One to connect uh, with the, uh, your Azure resources. So, I believe uh, you have uh, our support team has sent you the credentials now to these to Azure your Azure uh, subscription. So if you have received the credentials, uh, you can please confirm that in the Zoom chat before I can uh, move on. So now they need the Azure credentials, right? Exactly. Yeah. And make yeah. sure uh, you register when you register, you choose the email that was sent to you, user at this tenant trend uh, micro immersion uh, Azure on Microsoft.com and uh, to choose uh, and then enter the credentials and not to choose your employee or employer uh, company email. Yeah, maybe you stay a little bit of that one, uh, Mohammed, mm -hmm. uh, on the hovering, because uh, Oliver just confirmed that he received the Azure. All right.
Yes. Yeah. Of okay. course, at this point, we have to take it step by step and a little bit of time because everybody who's working with us, we want to make sure that you can follow. So we don't have pressure here or no rush. It's important that you guys can really exactly. follow up step by step. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, maybe you go slowly ahead, Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. So once you actually log in into your uh, Microsoft Azure portal, you'll be able to see a bar like this. Or let me actually just go to the home bar, uh, to the home page. And if you can see from Azure services, the app registrations, they'll be fine. If not, you can just also see it here from recent services if you have ever uh, this, used that. Or you can just click app registration or just app, not even to complete it, you will see it pop up right here, app registrations. This this is the, the service that will allow us to connect Azure uh, uh, resources with the Cloud One. Uh. Mm -hmm. One one second, Mohammed. Um, Dirk is saying that credentials are not working. So maybe we go, we go back to that step once again, because this is very important. If we lose people here, they cannot move forward. So what what again do they need in terms of credentials so they can they can um, proceed? Mm -hmm. So you would you would actually let me actually go to the Azure Active Directory and maybe uh, pick on my account. So you just need our uh, support team in the email that I've sent uh, an email with user 00, for example, that's the number of your subscription. If it's my subscription I'm using, 000, 000, 000 and then the at uh, the name of the tenant, and then a, a small uh, password. But if maybe if it's not our support team, if you specify, for example, your, um, for example, if you specify your uh, email, our support team will resend you an email with uh, a new password. They just reset it from here. But anyway, the email should be like this, for example, user 001, and then the tenant um, address. And you just enter that uh, if you want to log in from here, for example. And that's it. You, you just enter the credentials. They will take you to the Azure portal. Okay, so Dirk, if you maybe can check again the mail and see um, whether you have the correct credentials there and try it again. If you have any mm -hmm. other questions or if it's not working, let us know. Otherwise, we can then reset and send you a, a new email. That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, just mention it in the chat, please, and our yes. support team will follow up. Mm -hmm. So I was at the app registration uh, stage. So once you click app registration, you can see it right away from here. And we will have to uh, create new registration. The first thing to do is to actually name your registration. And uh, you have to be consistent with the number of your subscription and the name you're going to name uh, your your registration. Why is that? Because once you're going to uh, search for your registration application later on, it's going to be very easy for you to, to actually do that. So I'll just uh, put in AI W connector. And then the number of the subscription I'll be using is 000. And then you can put accordingly your number of the subscription you, you have been uh, assigned by our support team. Once that is done, just click register. And you'll get a notification saying that the registration was successful. That is a good news. Uh, it will be prompted to the overview window of your new registered application. And I want you to copy some information. So first, we will copy the application client ID. So just click copy to clipboard, and it should be copied. And if you can open up a notepad, a blank one, to store this uh, temporarily information 
that we will need for registration. So the first thing is I'll paste the app ID. The second thing is copy your, uh, or, or the, the directory tenant, which is this one is shared uh, between among us, between all of us, but the application ID is obviously uh, special or specific for your uh, registration. So I'll paste the tenant ID, Active Directory tenant ID right here. And as you can see, I still have two other information I will need to uh, store. So now, actually, the uh, app registration to sync in with Cloud One, it would need a kind of an authentication. Otherwise, anyone could use uh, the resources. So for that, we'll have to go on the left hand side from here certificates and secrets with this uh, key icon, the golden key icon, just click on it. And you would want to choose new client secret. We'll give a description for this secret. This is only for uh, further uh, investigation or if you wanna uh, reach out to the key, you can remember what's the, what, what's the use of it. So you can name it anything. I'll just name it secret. Zero, zero, zero. Obviously the uh, duration until ex expiration is uh, six months. So keep it like that and just click add. After that, you will be giving the value of your secret key. So under value uh, tab here, you're gonna see the value secret key. Just click copy to clipboard and make sure you can copy, you've already copied it or you've been able to copy it before you, you refresh the page or you lose connection because once uh, you lose it, it's gonna disappear until you create a new uh, client secret key. Okay. Let me now go to back to the step-by-step -step guide. So as you can see, all of the uh, steps have been now completed. And we still just need to copy um, the subscription ID and assign the permissions. So now we'll move on to recording the subscription ID. Go back to my To home and then from home you should be able under azure services again should be able to see subscriptions just click on it and because of permission you should be able only to see your own uh, subscription that have been assigned to you for me i'll be using as i said subscription zero zero so i'll just have to move on a little bit further and here it is so once you find your subscription that corresponds to the number of your user you just click on it. And we get to see the overview of the subscription. We just copy the subscription ID. And this will be the last kind of information that we actually need to save temporarily for registration. So now we've got the app registered. We've got the uh, secret key for authentication ready. What we need to do, an additional uh, secret measure taken by Azure, is that we need to allow access control to, to give a permission, to give a role assignment. So for that, we'll just click add under, obviously on the um, left-hand side, under identity, access management, access control. We just click add and then click add role assignment. You'll be able to see many different roles, but we will only choose the reader role. Click reader, and then you see the, the, the dot icon, a red icon and disappeared. And now it's prompting us to move to members to choose which member should we apply this role to or give this permission to. So we'll go to members here, and then we'll skip these two and we click on this plus uh, button with select members.
So here I'll just click AIW connector. And I've seen uh, some people that actually have completed the app registration part. That's good. And you want to choose your uh, corresponding app registered. Uh, for example, for me, it's a zero, zero, zero. Don't choose uh, another app that is not corresponding to your uh, account because it will uh, mix up and you will not be able to control it after all, afterwards. So zero, 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 this is important. Click on it, one click is enough. Then click select. Finally, you'll see it now here uh, that it has been selected with this object ID and you'll just click review plus assign. Click on it again a second time and you should be able to see add in role assignment in progress. And once it's good, it will give you a green check icon. So now the, everything is done and we need to move back to uh, Cloud One portal for a smooth uh, registration. As you can see, the other auto assignment, selecting the proper uh, member. And now number two, connect Cloud One Workload Security Console by Azure Connector. Okay. Mohammed, quick, quick question here from the chat. Mm -hmm. For some participants, the add role assignment is disabled. Do you know why that can be? Mm. Maybe, okay. There could be due to uh, if they have limited access, but I, I think uh, all of the users have the access. Maybe if the user can share with us his number, I can do a quick check. Normally it should be from here, from subscription, and it mm. should be allowed. Oliver, if you want, you can, you can yeah, it's, it's 062. 062. You just okay. shared it, yeah. Maybe so you can double check. Mm -hmm. We can do a quick check, no problem. So I think normally it's all the roles have been assigned and it should have, he already have the user already has contributor role. Mm -hmm. But if uh, if you can, uh, the, the user, if they can uh, click on access control here and check again on add role assignment, mm -hmm. that is still disabled. Can you please do that? Yes, Oliver, if you can double check that, maybe maybe it works now. Refreshing okay. wouldn't help you, right? That's so simple, huh? Uh, yeah, it normally wouldn't help because it's, uh, well, it doesn't actually, it's not bad. Yep, it says add road assignment and then there's uh, acclamation points uh, disabled. Mm. Okay, maybe our support team will help you with that because they need maybe to do something from the back end. Mm -hmm. If our support team can increase uh, your privileges for this lab to give you this or solve this situation, it, I think it's just a permission uh, situation. It should be easy to to solve. Yes, Afna, if you could take of if you could take care of that uh, support team in, will the help. in the meantime because it's very important, right? Yes. Uh, because otherwise Oliver can't continue to, to work with us here and that's the purpose of the call today. So um, please confirm that you that you have a look into this one while um, Mohammed can mm -hmm. continue. I'll go, yeah, I'll go slowly, yeah, thank you. So uh, let's go back to the Cloud One portal. And as the first thing you see is the dashboard or that it provides statistical information about incidents and anything happening in, in your uh, Cloud One environment. But Sorry, Mohamed, the... one, one, one more question from the chat. Uh, maybe this mm -hmm. also helps because Sven is asking, which user do you have to enter in the role as assignment? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. 
Um, actually, the user that you would need to add, let me go back. So uh, the user that you would need to add is actually the app that you have registered. So for example, let me show you from the role assignments that I've already done. You should be able to see under reader, you should be able to see the AI W connector 00. Well, let me again demonstrate. When you click add, you click on add role assignment. And you wait until the page is completed. Then you click on reader. The role we want is reader. Mm -hmm. Then you move on to members. You click on select members with the plus button. And you should be able, once you click ARW connector, zero, zero for me, for example, should be able to mm -hmm. see the zero, zero. You just click select. And once you click select, you go back here and click review and assign on the bottom left. And that's all. Okay, thank you very much, Sven. I hope that that uh, brings you forward. Thank you. Yeah, you found it, great. Okay, we can proceed. Thank you so much, okay. So uh, under the dashboard, we just go to computers where we have uh, all of the computers that we, uh, the, the, the agents of the Cloud One workload security installed and uh, reporting back, it's under computers. Click on computers again. Uh -huh. So as you can see, when you refresh it, there are still no nothing here because we haven't connected workload security to any agent or, or uh, workload. So we just click under add on the green plus button. And if we can go down, we want to pick add Azure account. That's what we want to pick because we're in the Azure environment. Normally a window should pop up. And here the display name, meaning the name that you want the uh, account in, in uh, uh, Cloud One to reflect uh, like. So I'll just click, for example, you can click anything, just click uh, C1, C1WS, and then I'll just click uh, Mohammed Demo. You can obviously name it anything you like. Uh, now this is the part where we will need that notepad. So the first thing we would need to do is copy the tenant ID. Here in Cloud One, it's uh, reflected as Active Directory ID, which is the same thing. So you just copy it, paste it. Make sure it's the right one, obviously, because sometimes copy buttons not work. Yep. Then the second thing to copy is the subscription ID. So it goes from top to uh, bottom. Subscription ID. So we paste the subscription ID. After that, the third thing we want to, to actually paste is the application ID. So each one should paste their own application and subscription ID. Under application. So once we uh, paste the application ID, we'll just here for the application credential, remember the secret value we've copied, so just click password, copy the secret value. And once everything is ready, we'll just click next. Should pick it up by uh, Cloud One, should pick up the information and sync up with our Azure. As you can see, you will get a green check if you, everything has been uh, correct. Your Azure account has been added successfully. Some information, again, the same information about your Azure ID, uh, subscription ID, application ID, and then you will see two virtual machines because your resource group has two virtual machines. So they will appear here and they will be picked up by Cloud One. So I'll wait for a few seconds for the audience to confirm if they have reached this step successfully. 
uh, if some of you have reached it, then we can move on. Yeah, it would be great to get some feedback from you guys and really appreciate you working with us here, getting it done step by step. Thank you, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas and Marcus. All right. So once everything is connected, we'll just click close. And we'll uh, downsize the notepad page because we don't need it anymore. Uh, one thing you're gonna notice right now is this cloud icon and the account is appearing under this tree. Uh, with the resource group also name has been picked up and your two computers or your two VMs workloads whatever you want to call them they appear here the ransomware and the uh, DVWA server and then the ransomware at uh, the Microsoft server ransomware all right let me go back to the step-by-step -step guide So as you can see, after the connection, everything is okay. Now we go on to the third part, which is Azure and Cloud One workload security configuration. Meaning that we just need to open the firewall, change, reconfigure the firewall rules for the connections uh, to actually uh, be established once we wanna enter and, and deploy the workload security agents. So uh, as you know, Azure has the network security group, which controls the connections inside of the uh, resource groups. So what we will do is go back to the Azure portal. And then on the left-hand side uh, tab, we just uh, scroll down Scroll down until we see the resource groups icon. So you wanna click on resource group, then the number of your subscription. For example, for me, it's triple zero. So I'll just click resource group zero, zero, zero for me. Once you enter that, you're gonna see now the resources listed down uh, under the resource group on the overview page. From here, overview page, you'll see your uh, resources and the location they are deployed in. So we wanna scroll down again until we see the default network security group or NSG. We click on it. And here you're gonna see three security rules, inbound security rules. One is uh, under port 22 with protocol TCP. This is for the SSH so that we can uh, later on deploy the, uh, the workload security agent on the uh, DVWA machine, the Linux one. So we wanna click on the default allow 22, a window should pop up. And from here, you can choose the source address, IP address type. So you can put it under my IP address, which is recommended. Sometimes if your connection uh, cuts down or syncs up, you have to redo this, this, uh, this step. Okay, so you wanna choose my IP address. That's what the step guide uh, recommends because it's more secure. For, the, for me, for the purposes of this lab, because my connection could actually, uh, my external IP could actually refresh uh, often. So I'll just click any, and I'll click save. Obviously you'll see the icon because it's not, from a security uh, perspective, it's not recommended. But that's why you see this uh, warning triangle or sign. For uh, the next rule, which is the default under the uh, HTTP uh, protocol for the DVWA web app location, 
we'll click default allow 80. And this one, if you, since it's just a web app, if you click any, although the the step-by-step uh, -step guide recommends choosing my IP address, which means your machine IP address, but I'll just click any, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not bad. For the default, uh, allow 330.88.89, which is for the RDP connection to the Windows machine, Windows server. For this one, I'll just click uh, my IP address. It's not gonna affect anything because it propagates uh, fairly easy on the Windows uh, systems. So again, you just click save. This is actually my external IP address, and I've set those as any any. So you should be able to do the same to your uh, machines. And now the part for the configuration is complete. And before I move on to the next part, which is deploying the agent, I'll wait for a few seconds if you have any questions about this part or if you can also please confirm your uh, success on this part, that'll be good. Hmm. Marcus is ex extraordinarily, extraordinarily, I cannot speak anymore, quick. So that's good. Thanks for that, Marcus. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But let's give it another 10 seconds, please. All right, sure, no problem. Okay, please go ahead. All right, thank you, Adrian. All right. So uh, on the left-hand side, you wanna choose the part of the step-by-step -step guide, deploying Cloud One workload security. So we'll try, the purpose of this uh, part is to deploy the workload security agent. So we're gonna deploy it on the Windows server and also on the Linux server. Because let me just go back real quick here to the cloud one. If you can see the machines have been picked up uh, by our, uh, since we have synced our accounts with, with Azure. But as you can see, the status says unmanaged and it says unknown. It doesn't have meaning it, when it says unmanaged, it means something that it's either uh, bad with the deep security or the cloud one workload security agent inside of the machine, or there is no agent at all. So the, the, in this case, the status which shows unmanaged means there is no agent at all, and we would need to deploy uh, the agent there. That's what we will do. We will start by the uh, Windows, like I said. So we want to RDP to our Windows server. It's fairly easy step. So what do we do is under here, if you can see this part right here, let me just highlight it on the resource group here. You wanna click resource group 00 on the top. That will take you back to the resources. You wanna scroll up and look for AIW ransomware, virtual machine. So we click on it. Now we want to connect to it. Obviously, the machine is already on, so we just connect to it. We click for that, we click connect. It will obviously automatically take us to RDP since it's a Windows. All we do is download RDP file, which handles the connection automatically. Obviously, we want to, we want to click on keep to complete the download and open file once the download of the RDP file is complete. So once you click on open, you'll be able to see a message like this. And you just click connect. Now start configuring the remote connection session. If you see something like this, it means that you 
need to choose more choices and enter with a different account. So we use a different account. And then we will choose our account, which is AIW admin for the password. We'll be able to get it from the step-by-step -step guide. So if we go down in the step-by-step -step guide here under step four, this is where you will see <clears throat> the uh, AI, AI WA admin, which means the username and the password. The password is AIW workshop. So we'll just copy it. And we go back to the RDP connection and we paste it. And obviously don't forget the dot and the anti slash or slash symbol. So click remember me in case we lose connection. We click OK. A quick um, question here, Mohammed. Um, Sven is asking the regarding the step by step guide. Sven, this is something. Should, should they have received it in advance? Uh, normally it's in the chat. It's all, all also in the Zoom chat, but let me let me copy. Yeah, this. I, I just talked about it, Sven, in the introduction for sure. I showed that slide, but it could have been that you've missed it. And anyways, we have just posted it again here in the chat via yeah. hyperlink. So, so you can just click on it and um, yeah, it's, it's accessible for everyone. So you can just take it from there. You find the password there. So um, sorry for that. Maybe we could have communicated that better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. So uh, yeah, I've copied. Let me copy that. I think I've established the connection. Yep. So just click. Don't ask me again. And click yes. You should complete the. Uh, the configuration of the remote session. Okay. I hope you can see my remote session with Windows. We see you working on Windows and tabs, and the guide is open, I think, simultaneously. Nice. This is what they should see now or not? It's not right. Yeah, this, this normally this window should pop up for the remote disk uh, connection with your IP address and the port number. This is the Windows machine, the inside of it. So if mm -hmm. you can see this, uh, let me know. That means you have established connection. Okay, Marcus and Sven, maybe you can confirm whether this worked out or not. It will be helpful. Yeah, so under step five, this is what you'd be able should be able to see when you successfully log in to the Windows. Okay, uh, we have Svenny who can just follow only by watching because uh, he had to, he, he has to, to see the recording in order to, to have it uh, for himself uh, after the session. 
and Marcus is having um, some firewall challenges where it's blocking the RDP. Ah, so, yes. Uh, yes. If, uh, if you're using a company uh, machine, that may be the problem. Yes. Could be restrictions. So he needs a okay. quick workaround for that. Yeah. So just click on, uh, I'll continue. Uh, so there are many ways to actually deploy the agent inside of the machine. But for this purpose of this session, we will choose the one to deploy by script or the deployment script choice. And for the machine, the Windows machine, we will choose PowerShell. So in Cloud One uh, Workload Security Console, we wanna navigate back to the portal here and under the port, we're gonna click on uh, deployment scripts and we wanna choose Windows agent deployment. Now, uh, we will need a base security policy for the essential configurations uh, for any deployment. So uh, it's recommended to actually, because it's gonna make things easier for us. So it, under security policy, we wanna click on base policy, then use this drop down arrow. And under it, we wanna again click on Windows and go again, scroll down. And we wanna check Windows Server. So base policy, Windows, Windows Server. And normally, this is how the PowerShell script looks like for the deploying the agent. But we'll just click Save uh, to File. Obviously, Keep. And I would like to copy this script very easily. And actually, uh, paste it inside of the Windows Server machine you have RDP to. So I'll just quick paste. We have a quick question here, Mohammed. Is mm -hmm. it also possible to integrate other Azure workloads uh, then um, apart from virtual machines, like subscriptions or so, or do they need another trend tool for that? Uh, other Azure workloads, uh, for example, uh, then VMs, Yes, it yes. is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. For example, containers, for example, yeah, that's possible. Um, even if you have, uh, again, you can also do like a, a virtual machine, then inside of the virtual machine, you're running a container inside of it. That's also possible. And we're going to actually see that in the DVWA example, where we're oh, okay, actually, cool. where we have installed the, D, the, the DVWA server is actually running on a Docker container on an, an Ubuntu server. So that's also possible. Mm -hmm. And there are other, obviously, uh, Cloud One is not just workload security. So there are multiple components that cover different security layers. Okay, thank you. So thank you for the question. Yeah. And uh, let's go back. So uh, on agent deployment script, I'll just uh, right click and then run with PowerShell. And you should initiate the, the installment uh, script. Obviously, before that, there is, this is a Windows policy. So I'll just click Y. So I'll enter Y, as you can see, which is for yes. Then I'll click OK, enter. And it should now download. As you can see, DSA download started. DSA install started. And I'll, we'll give it some time because it installs the while it's installing, as you can see, there is a window here uh, popping up saying deep security uh, is installed. The installment has started and we see this icon for trim micro deep security. You go ahead, or are you still waiting on something? Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. yes. So uh, as you can see now, it's uh, in the process of installment. That's why you see all of the uh, capabilities are still on the blue icon. 
but we're gonna let that sink in and, and install uh, peacefully while we go back and check on some uh, information. So normally once it's done, it should allow, show a green uh, button right here, but for now, I'll just continue with the step-by-step -step guide in order to uh, take advantage of time. Like I said, the base policy is shown here. And when you, once you run with PowerShell, then you should be able to see it. Click yes for the script. And once it's installed, it should show uh, managed online with the green icon. Now for the deploy agent by deployment uh, with the Ubuntu. For this, we have to SSH to Ubuntu server. Uh, therefore, we need to fire up the cloud shell on Azure. So uh, when you go back to Microsoft Azure, you'll see here the icon on top next to the notification icon, you see cloud shell. So we wanna start that. Click reconnect. Uh, normally it will, uh, for you, if, if it's new, it will uh, make you choose between PowerShell and Bash. So we wanna choose Bash because I've already reconnected earlier. That's why I did skip that that uh, that step for me. But you wanna choose Bash and then you click on it. And then you wanna choose your subscription to do the storage account inside of it. So make sure you, you choose your own subscription. For me, it's subscription 000. So I'll just click that and click create storage. And it should uh, fire up the cloud shell on Azure. So it's creating while it's doing that. It takes a little bit of time. Just can check. Okay, the cloud shell has, has succeeded and it's now connecting us to the terminal. And as you can see now, the DSA for, uh, if I go back to the windows, the deep security agent activation is starting. So that's good news. And I'll go back now to the Azure portal and continue on the PowerShell thing. So back to the step-by-step -step guide, we should be able to see this command. This is the command we're gonna use to SSH to the Ubuntu machine. So it says SSH AIWA admin at, and then we wanna use the public address IP of the Ubuntu machine. So for that, we'll go back to Azure portal. On the resource group, we can keep the cloud shell uh, open, terminal open. I will just scroll uh, up to the AIWDVWA machine, virtual machine. It's the first one in the list. Uh, once we click on it, we be able to actually copy the public IP address of that machine. Obviously, you copy your own corresponding IP address. Just click copy to clipboard and it's copied. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, paste it around here for later use. And I can type in the command SSH AIW admin at and then paste the IP click on enter should be able to see are you sure you want to continue connecting just click yes and we'll ask you for the password 
So the password is obviously the same password we've used for the RDP. We just have to copy it again. Go back to Azure portal under the cloud shell. We want to now paste the password. Click enter and it should connect us. And now we are inside the Ubuntu uh, machine. Now we want to prepare the deployment script for the Linux machine. So we go back again to the Cloud One portal. Under support, we choose deployment script. And as you can see by default, it says it's selecting the platform for Linux agent deployment. The base policy, again, for easy configurations so that we don't have to config reconfigure anything from the beginning. So under base policy, you just click on Linux server. So base policy, then choose Linux server. And since we're already inside of the machine, we're not gonna prepare the document. We'll just copy in, we're copying the script. So we're not gonna click save to file. We just click copy to clipboard. We click copy to clipboard. And we will go back. And as you can see, it's the same thing in the step. We'll prepare the nano editor to actually paste the script inside of the terminal. So after you choose the policy, we'll just go back to the Ubuntu server and under the cloud shell and click na and enter nano deploy.sh as shown here. Let me do that. So nano editor. Deploy.sh. It will open up. Uh, it will open up the text, uh, the nano text editor, and I'll just click on paste. And just to control uh, C to actually save. Control X, sorry, to actually save, and then we enter Y. to confirm. So control X, once you're inside again, control X, then yes with a Y and then enter. Now it's saved. So now all I have to do is actually run the script. For that, we do sudo bash deploy.sh. And it should actually download the agent package and start the installment uh, process. For our windows, since the DSA has been activated, you can see now the status has changed from unmanaged to managed online with a green icon. So this is good. This means that the agent is in, has been installed and activated successfully. For this, we'll actually now finish the part where we deploy the agent and we can finally begin the lab. So we'll start with the first part of the lab, which is the ransomware protection. And we wanna discover the anti-malware uh, capabilities. And especially uh, one capability of the anti-malware is the behavior monitoring, which basically doesn't use a signature based uh, like a hash or strings to actually detect malware. So if there, and this is very useful if there is a new malware or a malware that mutates and changes its signature. So it basically depends on the behavior of the executable inside of a machine. And if it's actually detected as malicious, then it will be blocked. So we wanna discover this capability. So for ransomware protection, we wanna configure the anti-malware security policy. For that, 
what we want to do is go back to the cloud one. So under computers, obviously, and with ransomware, double click on it, a new uh, web page should pop up. And here you can see all the capabilities uh, that are embedded in the workload security. So for our purpose, we'll choose anti-malware. And for the configuration, since uh, we want to have access to actually configure and uh, reconfigure and change things, we're going to change it from inherited on to just on. And then for real-time scan, we want to disable the inheritance from the base policy. Remember, we have chosen. And we want to go to malware scan configuration on the real-time scan and click on edit. So once we click the edit button, we'll see a new page. And here you can see all of the capabilities of the anti-malware. We want to scroll down to behavior monitoring. And we want to change the action to take from active action, which means that once behavior monitoring detects a suspicious behavior of a, an executable, it will uh, terminate it. We want to change that to pass, meaning you just log in the information, the security event, and you don't take any action. That's what pass means. We want to click on apply. We have another apply. remark here, Mohammed. Um, it's from Thomas. He says the deep security agent on Windows is activated and it's ready. On Linux, on the other on the other hand, it's hanging on the SSH command, so it's not really progressing. So his conclusion is that he takes the Windows machine for the lab. Mm -hmm. It does hang, uh, Thomas, on the Linux sometimes because of the firewall security rules. So uh, if you can just respond quickly for the, when you configured the network security group for the 22 port for the SSH, have you chosen my IP address or have you chosen any? Because if you've chosen any, it propagates very quickly, but if you do my IP address, it takes time to open the connection for you. That's why it hands, yeah. That's why I chose so, any, so that I don't waste time. Okay, try that out, Thomas, and please. I see, yeah. when you did my IP address, mm -hmm. it, will, it will take time to propagate. But with okay. any, it does it very quickly. Yeah. So don't worry about it. You can you can obviously discover it later on uh, after the lab ends. Okay. So um, yeah. So I did change the, the action to pass, like I said, and just okay. Okay. Uh, I want to click then on save for the policy to propagate back to the deep security agent. And I'll minimize this win this uh, sorry, I'll minimize this window. And I will go back um, to the step guide. So as you can see, we change configuration to on, disable inherited, click on edit under mal uh, malware scan configuration, search for uh, behavior monitoring change the action to pass. And now it's time for us to run the quickbuck.exe. Now, one thing before we do that is this note. So uh, normally when we deploy your subscriptions, by default, the quickbuck.exe should be under the C drive, right? But uh, lately Azure actually has been enabling the uh, the uh, their own security uh, Cloud, Cloud Defender, that's why it can delete. Sometimes it, it misses, but sometimes it will delete. Once we just deploy it, it will delete the quick buck. So we have included this command for you to actually, we're gonna use inside of the machine to actually download the quick buck again from our GitHub repository. But since that's been reformatted from this step-by-step, -step, just let's do one step, copy it first. If you are with me, just copy it first. I'll choose a new uh, tab actually, and I'll just do a, f a few uh, editing, meaning I'll take this space out, and now the command is ready. Copy it again, and I will go directly to my Windows server machine. I will go uh, open up uh, Windows 
file explorer. So click on it. And I will go to this PC and to the C drive, double click. As you can see for me, it didn't actually uh, pick, Cloud Defender did not delete my quick pack, but it could do it for your subscription. So for that, we wanna just uh, run a PowerShell command to actually download again the, um, the, the ransomware executable. So on top on this search bar or the path bar, we just click PowerShell, enter PowerShell dot exe to open up the PowerShell inside of this folder. So it should open up the PowerShell. <clears throat> And we will copy that command, invoke web request. Now, it just, as you can see, it starts the download that uh, executable quick pop. So it's now it's okay. That's downloaded it. We want to now open again, go back to the search bar. I want to open the command prompt inside of this folder. So we just click cmd.exe and it should actually pop up the, the command prompt with this uh, executable. Now, if you are following through the step-by-step the -step guide, now you'll see that you have to uh, enter input the command to run the malware, the ransomware. So quick buck dot exe then run space then run then you hit enter as you can see nothing happened because we have disabled the uh, behavior monitoring capability under anti-malware to take action pass so what uh, behavior monitoring have done right now in deep security is that it actually did log the 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 event of, of what happened but it didn't take action that's why it, you're saying the quick buck actually uh, performing fine with no problems uh quick information about this quick buck uh, is actually just a ransomware simulator it's not a ransomware real ransomware just a simulator which means it does the exact same thing as a ransomware uh, malware would do so as you can see from the uh, log of commands here uh, the processes what it does, it basically opens a new file. It names it encrypted files, and it writes about 10,000 documents to that file, to that folder, and then it encrypts them. So that's that's all what it does. But from the cloud one or cloud security perspective, and from the behavior monitoring analysis, this is actually a behavior of a ransomware, although it doesn't uh, encrypt any uh, valuable files. So that's why it will detect it. And once we choose the action to be actually to take action, it will terminate it very quickly. Uh, let me open that file. So as you can see, I already encrypted, clicked, uh, created encrypted files. And if I open it, it's already started uh, creating the documents and it will continue like that. So it should take some time, but it, it does actually uh, encrypt files uh, rather quickly once it reaches uh, a few minutes into the process. Normally, if we uh, open up the deep security notifier from here, and we click on view events, normally we should see the events here, but since it's early on, it's actually still doesn't show anything.
like how many events usually should should you should we see there right now Mohammed? oh uh, yeah so normally yeah but it, it's it's okay it does take some time uh, normally you should see it under the deep security agent first you should see the the event here and then you should see it uh, it will propagate back it takes some more even more time a little bit of time to actually propagate back to the console on the console mm -hmm. but uh, as you can see the, the the thing is that the ransomware simulator haven't started encrypting yet it's still creating the files but once it encrypts the first file it will be picked up as a as a malware mm -hmm. So we still wait for the encryption or of the ransomware or what? Uh, yes, Adrian, yes, yeah. If you change it to any, uh, this is old question, I guess. Yeah, it should be much quicker and smoother. Okay. And if you have any other questions on the about the lab, please, uh, now is the time to ask any questions you have because we are gonna still wait a little bit for it to actually uh, do the job. Normally, uh, so if I go back to that AIW ransomware page, when I open the configurations under, under anti-malware, uh, these top tabs here, if I choose anti-malware events, this is where the lab, uh, if, you, if you've been following the lab guide, this is where it actually tells us to check on the events of the uh, ransomware. And as you can see, that's already detected it right now. So when I, if you want to get the events, just click Get Events. This is the one that will show you actually uh, the events happening. So this is the event, for example, of the action that I've taken right now when I have run the QuickBuck exe. And as you can see, it has the uh, malware tag of the behavior monitoring. And then the action taken, which is important for us, it shows past. The type of the, uh, the virus that it shows here uh, is actually ransomware. OK. Now we have done the first part. The thing next to do, actually, is to, again, under general, if I click again, anti-malware, I wanna actually change things again and change the policy from actually um, to take the action pass to actually do take action. So again, under configuration, just choose on, uh, unselect or uh, disable inherited. And under malware scan configuration, we click edit. And what we do is just reverse uh, the choice of last time. So under un enable behavior monitoring, action to take, we're gonna switch that from pass to active action. We click apply, we click okay. Save is also good to click. And what am I gonna do right now? I just want to see uh, before I run again, stop the process and run. I want to see if the ransomware has started encrypting. Okay, it's just a lot of files, so it's taking a lot of time. So since we've got the event already, All I have to do is actually close uh, 
stop the process of the ransomware via control plus Z plus C. Okay, I have stopped now the ransomware from actually uh, taking control and I will run it again. I'll run it again to see if now it's gonna be able to show the writing 10,000 documents again, or it will just terminate. So I'll just click quick buck.exe run after I have changed the policy. Takes a little bit of time, I guess. Command prompt is not responsive. Uh -huh. It's okay, I can close it. Open it again. Quick. Exe. Ah, should be run, obviously. Okay. As you can see, it was quickly terminated and we have received a notification by the agent, security agent saying malware detected and the infected file name is quickbuck.exe. It has been sent by the Trend Micro Deep Security and Notifier application. So as you can see now, uh, as opposed to the first try, the QuickBuck has stopped at this process when it started to actually uh, just wanted to create the file and start encrypting. It was terminated and blocked by the uh, anti-malware capability of the workload security. Uh, this concludes the lab. Uh, of, of the ransomware. We'll just have to do one more thing is that look at the event and see how it looks like. So I'll minimize this window for the RDP because I will not need it again. And wait a little bit. And under anti-malware, I'll go to anti-malware events and just Click on Git events to refresh the event log. It does take a lot of time, uh, sorry, a little bit of time to actually propagate back. So you just keep uh, clicking on Git event and wait a little bit, a few seconds, then refresh it again to see the uh, information. Ah, as you can see, now it shows the same exact information because it's the exact file that we have run, but the, 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 the change and the difference is the action taken. Now the action taken is terminated. Uh, on the first try, it was passed, and that's what the enter malware did. It blocked, actually, the, the, uh, the ransomware from running. So that has, that's how you protect your uh, workload and uh, your environment against ransomwares. And now we go back to the step-by-step uh, -step guide. As you can see, these are the steps for you to review later on. Obviously you will uh, have the lab for 24 hours for you to actually repeat the steps and repeat the labs to see uh, the, all of the results that we have uh, been able to actually get. As you can see, the last step here is that you should actually see the uh, take action taken as terminated. So that's exactly what we had. The next part of the lab, which is the final one, is the SQL injection. Now, one of the capabilities of, of uh, workload security 
since it protects servers, uh, is that it has a host-based intrusion prevention system, IPS, that would actually have security rules that will block any maneuverability or uh, attack that is uh, actually performed uh, remotely. And one of them is actually on, on problems on databases uh, or security breaches of databases, uh, which are SQL, the famous SQL injections. So uh, for that, we'll have to go to the Cloud One platform and we will open up or double click on the AIW DVWA machine. Just a double click to open the configurations of it. So as you can see uh, on the left-hand side, capabilities of workload security, we just look for intrusion prevention and we click on it. And by default, it's selected as uh, prevent, but under configuration, we want to change the inherited uh, policy from the base policy to just on for this capability. And then we want to change prevent from prevent to detect. So it does have the capability to actually just detect. So we'll just pass on any event that happens, it will not take, take action. But if you choose prevent, which we'll do for the next step, is it, it will take uh, action. For now, I'll just click on prevent, uh, on detect, sorry. And then I'll go to assign the intrusion prevention rules. So the rule we wanna assign is the, from the, it has a certain name and, and an ID. So if I go back to the step-by-step uh, uh, -step guide, so after I do the on and I choose detect, and I will go to the uh, intrusion assign intrusion prevention rules and I'll click on the button assign unassign. Obviously, you want to make sure all filters are set to all. They are set to all by default, but you may want to recheck that. This is the rule you want to actually copy. This is the rule you want to apply. And it has an ID. You can just do it by copying the ID and remembering the name if you want to do, if you do not want to copy everything. So what I will do is actually do that. I'll go to assign and assign. Make sure all these filters are on all so that we can query through every rule, through everything. This is the rule. So 10.05.613, generic SQL injection prevention number two. We click on it and hit enter. Then it will fetch for that rule and it will give us, uh, will only show that exact rule. I will uh, tick this uh, button or box Then normally I should click on OK as the fourth step since the base policy is already showing detect only. So I'll just click OK. As you can see, it already the, the rule shows detect only. After choosing that rule, it should actually be uh, here listed on this list. And this is it. If you remember its ID, this is the same ID. So this is it. Uh, another capability, now that we have chosen the rule, since actually, like I said, the uh, DVWA web server is running on a Docker container, we will have to enable a feature that will actually monitor the uh, container's network, even if it's already on an Ubuntu server, so we'll have to monitor uh, the network. As you can see by deep security, the, the workload security has already de detected uh, that it's running on a container. That's why, now let me first save.
that's why if we click on overview right here, you're gonna see, you, you might notice a little bit of difference. You notice a, a, a kind of a blue cube, which if we go right here, it actually shows a green, uh, a blue kind of turquoise container. So for this, we'll have to just enable uh, the, the monitoring. So on the left-hand side, we wanna click on settings. Then on this top uh, here, we wanna click the tab that shows container protection workload. And under the intrusion prevention, we wanna change the, uh, from inherited, inherited yes to actually just yes. And then we wanna click on save. And now we will go ahead and prepare uh, the DVWA database. So as you can see, we've already been on the DVWA. I'll just minimize this cloud shell. I will not use it uh, anymore. And I will wanna copy the IP address of that uh, web app. And I'll just paste it here. And as you can see, that's taken me to the DVWA uh, main web page. Obviously, the username is admin. The password is password. Click on login. And I'll have to set up uh, the DVWA first. So I'll just click create reset database. It should uh, log me out after it resets and prepares the database. And that's what it, exactly what it did. And I'll click again on admin, uh, try again to log in, gain access, admin password. Login. As you can see now, it's giving me a welcome screen with all the, vulnerabilities that I can test. On this uh, table here, I wanna just choose SQL injection. And uh, we're gonna be able, we're gonna actually try to just run a very basic SQL injection command uh, or query and by basically just fetching for uh, sensitive data by using the admin or one equal one. We submit that. And as you can see, we've been able to fetch and, and, and retrieve this data. Obviously this could be sensitive data inside of your database. And if you're using legacy systems that do not have SQL injection uh, based counter security measures, then uh, uh, IPS could actually come to help. So as you can see, we've been following all the steps correctly. We wanna see the events obviously to see actually if uh, Cloud One workload security have been able to detect this or not. Since nothing happened, no action is taken, we wanna actually check, make sure if the event has been actually locked in or not. So if we go back to the AIW DVWA computer page and under intrusion prevention, under then we click on intrusion prevention events. Go on refresh and then Sometimes the best one is to click get events. And again, it does take a little bit of time to propagate back. Obviously, while we wait, if you have any questions, uh, questions are welcome. Yeah, I think um, we also have to, if we can, keep an eye on the time a little bit. I know there have been some questions and I know also, um, since it's also our first time we do this in Germany, kind of, this, this lab, I would say, we, I think, um, run into a collision a little bit with the time. 
What do you mm -hmm. think, Mohammed, um, from a professional uh, standpoint? Can, yeah. If we can get just uh, more five minutes, uh, basically, uh, it would be, okay. be fine because that's this is the last part of the lab. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. As you can see, it has detected actually the, the rule that has been uh, assigned, but it's only on the text only. This is what is important for us, the text only. There is no reset of the connection. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time we will actually change it to prevent. So we're going to on and we keep it as prevent. We wanna assign, Just click on assign, unassign. We want to search for the rule. And now under, uh, as you can see, it's still on the text only. So we'll just click right click properties under the rule and change it to prevent. From inherited detect only to prevent. Apply, okay. Save. Now we normally, it's gonna take a little bit of time to actually propagate back and reset the connection. So I'll just log out, try login again. Hopefully it will do it fast enough. Now, as you can see, the connection has been reset and that's what we want. Obviously, uh, since uh, due to the limited time, I'm not gonna wait for the event to propagate back and I'll just uh, actually continue on the last slide to actually show you what does the event looks like. And this is obviously been, the connection has been reset. <clears throat> and this is actually what the last, uh, image is show, show, showing actually if I zoom in you can see generic and then you can see the action which is important for us as reset so uh, this is it for our lab I uh, thank you so much for your attendance and for those who have actually uh, been able to to uh, stay with us uh, long enough thank you so much for your cooperation let me stop sharing sure thank you so much and um, again guys you will receive now or, or after this campaign um, a survey. So if you complete it, you will get also the the uh, um, license for your private use for your protection up to three devices. So please make sure to, uh, to fill that out. This was also kind of a pilot for us to in this two part kind of session, um, the one with the customer story. And now today uh, with Mohammed to go into the nitty and gritty details. So thank you very much for your patience. Mm -hmm. And we would also follow up with you guys if you wish to also with technical resources, of course, in order to get this running for you. So you can really find out for yourself whether you get the value out of it um, that you are aiming for. So yeah, with this, Mohammed, I, I found it very good how you did it very patiently. There were some yeah. questions, so the interaction was also nice. And in, in the future, we will also see how we can make this experience a bit better for you guys, especially also maybe with some homework. So you are, um, we, we lose less time on the preparation so we can go into the action quicker. But for that, uh, I want to say thank you to you and the team. So we close it for today. If you have any questions, please uh, send us an email and we will follow up with you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye-bye.